All right, welcome to the November 17th, 2021 City of Mesa Planning and Zoning Board hearing. We'll begin by taking a roll call. Uh, Board Member Allen. Here. Board Member Crockett. Here. Board Member Ayers. Absent. Board Member Boyle. I'm here. Board Member Peterson. Here. Vice Chair Villanueva Sacedo. Here. Chair Sarkissian is here. Um, we have a consent agenda today. However, a couple items that are still on the consent agenda. We do have some comments that we would like to be read into the record. So I will read those now. For case ZON 21-00291, uh, Lila Varner Perkins, which is her comment to be read. There is already too many delivery trucks behind our back wall. They are noisy and drivers look into our backyard with no privacy. They back up into the wall so it's ready to fall. The east side of the new subdivision will be affected the same. Build our wall stronger and higher, same for the east wall. The wall is not ours, but who does it belong to? But we will feel the pollution. Uh, item ZON 21-00297 from Clay Clark. Um, they do not, they oppose it, the item, but do not wish to have the uh, item read. Item ZON 21-00291, Roger and Janine Windhorst. They are opposed, and as per city code, when the new houses are built, please be sure that the new home's walls are at least 20 feet from the backyard walls. As many as 40 houses in the small acreage of this new neighborhood become way too crowded, unsightly, and too noisy. Please design this better so it becomes livable for all involved, including our new neighbors. Uh, item ZON 21-00734, David Tate is opposed and wishes to have their comment read that we support the coffee shop. The proposed chicken restaurant poses a potential parking issue during peak hours as the special use permit is allowing 11 less parking spaces, which is a concern. Uh, our parking demands are the greatest from 4, 4 to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and then again Saturday mornings from 8 to 1. Our peak parking will be at the same time as their peak parking. Uh, and this is actually part of a case that's getting pulled from the agenda, so we'll read it again. Um, all right, and right now we have board member Boyle will read the consent agenda. <coughs> okay, this is the consent agenda for the Wednesday, November 17th, 2021 Planning and Zoning Board public hearing. Um, items on the consent agenda, item 2A, the minutes from the October 27, 2021 study session and regular meeting. Um, item 3A, um, ZON 21-00469, District 6, within the 3300 block of South Sossaman. Um, this is, uh, the staff recommendation is continued to December 15th, 2021. Um, item 3B is off consent. Item 3C, ZON 21-00794, District 6, within the 5300 block of South Ellsworth Road, East Side, and within the 9200 block of East Cadence Parkway, South Side, located south of Ray Road on the east side of Ellsworth Road. Major modification to a site, an approved site plan. This request will allow for retail development. <coughs> um, stack re recommendation is approval with conditions. Item 3D, ZON 21-00811, District 5, within the 2800 block of North 58th Circle East Side and within the 5800 block of East McDowell Road North Side, located west of Wrecker Road on the north side of McDowell Road, site plan review. This request will allow for an industrial office development. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item 4A, ZON 21-00291, District 1, within the 1800 block of East McKellips Road, north side, located west of Gilbert Road on the north side of McKellips Road, rezoned from Agri Agriculture AG to Limited Commercial LC, to small lot single residence 3.0 with a planned area development overlay, RSL-3.0-PAD. This request will allow for a small lot single residence development. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions and there is a companion case to this one as well. Um, Item 4B, ZON 21-00746, District 6, within the 6800 to 7100 blocks of East Elliott Road, North Side, located east of Power Road on the north side of Elliott Road, rezoned from single residence 43, RS43, to light industrial with a planned area development overlay, LIPAD, and site plan review. This request will allow for an industrial development. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item 4C, ZON 21-00796, District 2, within the 4100 block of East Valley Auto Drive, north side, located west of Greenfield Road and north of Baseline Road, 
major modification to an approved site plan. This request will allow for an industrial development. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item 4D, ZON 21 00798, District 6, within the 4200 to 4400 blocks of South Sossaman Road, West Side. Located west of Sossaman Road and north of the Warner Road alignment. Rezoned from Agriculture, AG, to Light Industrial with a planned area development overlay, LIPAD. And site plan review, the request will allow for an industrial development. This is, uh, yeah, staff recommendation approval with conditions. Item 5A. Sossaman Business Campus, District 6, within the 3300 block of South Sossaman. Um, this one is also continued to December 15th. Item 5B, um, Gilbert and McKellips, District 1, ZON 21 00502, within the 1800 block of East McKellips Road, located west of Gilbert Road on the north side of McKellips Road, preliminary plat. Uh, this is the companion case to ZON 21 00291. Uh, item 4A, staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item 5C, the hub at 202 District 6, within the 4200 to 4400 blocks of South Sossaman Road, west side, located west of Sossaman Road and north of the Warner Road alignment, preliminary plat, the companion case of ZON 21-00789, uh, which is item 4D. The staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item 5D. Elliott 202, District 6, ZON 21-00700, within the 8800 to 9100 blocks of East Elliott Road, north side, and within the 8900 to 9100 blocks of East Peterson Avenue, south side, located west of Ellsworth Road, on the north side of Elliott Road. Preliminary plat. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Thank you, Board Member Boyle. Do I have any motions? Madam Chair, I would move the approval of the consent agenda as it has been read. I would second that. All right. If we can all please vote. <coughs> Board Member Allen, what's your vote? A. And it passes with Board Member Ayers absent. All right. Next item on the agenda, I'm going to go to ZON 21-00734, District 6, within the 3700 block of South Power Road, located south of Elliott Road on the east side of Power Road, site plan review and special use permit to allow for a retail building with a drive through And Planner Josh is here. Yes. Yeah. Josh Granard. So, yes, it's far more intimidating than it looks. Uh, so, uh, this is for ZON 21-00734, uh, Just Love Coffee. It is located on South Power Road. On the east side, it is for a special use permit as well as site plan review uh, to allow for retail development. It is located south of, uh, of Elliott as well as on the east side of Power Road. Uh, and uh, per the general plan, the designation is employment for a wide range of job opportunities as well as within a high quality setting and a mixed use activity designation which provides for community and regional activity centers. Uh, the zoning on this site is limited commercial. Uh, retail a building with a drive through is an allowed use in this zone. Uh, here's the site photo looking east from Power Road. Uh, here's the site plan. Uh, overall, the structure is 3,000 square feet. Uh, vehicular shared access is being provided from Power Road, uh, from the uh, Evo Swim School, which was did create this pad initially as part of their development. Uh, and so uh, part of the SUP request is to reduce parking. Um, based off of the TIA that was provided by the applicant, uh, the two uses for this building have been provided uh, at exceeding the requirements per the traffic engineers. Um, and also the initial parking reduction, uh, as the original narrative stated, uh, there was more parking provided. However, in order to follow the uh, Mesa City of Mesa quality design guidelines, uh, staff requested that the parking be uh, removed or relocated in order to meet the uh, no parking uh, directly adjacent to uh, major arterials. So per that, uh, as part of the citizen participation outreach, uh, we received multiple comments. Uh, the first one being from David Tate of Evo Swim School. Um, currently, they have a number of swim meets throughout the weekends as well as throughout the uh, weeks that they have. Um, and the original permit that was for Evo Swim School did have a SUP associated for a expansion of parking above the required uh, 125 max parking 
per the MZO. Uh, and you know, he had concerns that there is currently high demands on those peak swim days. Um, those typically are uh, either between four to eight on uh, weekends, uh, typically on a Saturday or Friday. Um, and typically, um, he's concerned because the parking is currently not enough uh, efficient for their site. Um, and there's currently no shared parking agreement uh, for the proposed uh, Just Love Coffee and the associated restaurant use. Uh, and there was a virtual meeting held October 6th via Zoom. Um, I personally attended as well as one attend, uh, citizen as well. Uh, the citizen was the property owner to the north of Evo Swim School. Um, and he's currently reiterated the concerns of swim, uh, Evo Swim School where Evo is parking on other people's properties, uh, which I reiterated was a purely civil issue uh, between property owners. Um, however, you know, is compared because uh, at the time he's looking to do commercial development on that site and has concerns that the future parking lot for his lot is gonna be utilized for that parking for Evo. And based off of that, staff finds that it complies with the 2040 general plan, complies with the Mesa Gateway uh, strategic development plan, as well as criteria for chapter 69 for site plan review, as well as the criteria for chapter 32 and 70 for a special use permit. Based off of that, staff is recommending approval with conditions. Thank you so much. All right, um, is the applicant here? Did you want to make any presentation or did you have, just want to respond to com questions? I just respond to your comments or questions. Okay. Board member Peterson, you had pulled this, um, you had some questions or comments? Go ahead. Yes, if you state your name. Oh, my name's Mitch Korob. I'm and the address? applicant for this property and going to own the coffee shop. Okay. Uh, state address. Oh, yeah, your address. Sorry. Oh, for my house? Yes. Uh, 4570 East Waterman Street in Gilbert. Great. Okay, Mitch, thank you. The, how many employees are working at uh, any given time at the coffee shop? So it'd be roughly probably about six to eight. Okay. And then adjacent to this is a, uh, a fast casual restaurant too, right? Correct. It'll be 1,500 square feet, so it'll be more minimal, you know, seating inside. It'll be patio outside. Same kind of structure with about six to eight, maybe less. Okay. And do you know, uh, is the the use or the restaurant for that locked in, or that's still to be determined? We have an LOI with uh, Harold's Chicken. They're also a franchise out of Chicago. I believe there's one here in Chandler. So they're looking to expand out into this market. Okay. And is the um, Just Love Coffee, are, are there other locations here in the metro? No, I'm area? trying to bring them out to this Arizona. Is the first one? Okay. Yeah, so they have, they're based in Nashville. They probably have about 200 nationwide. So I have, so I'm trying to get them to come to Arizona, then they're expanding to Vegas, but we're just trying to lock down the East Valley first. Okay, we'll gotcha. Go from there. All right, that's, that's fine. Okay, Board Member Crockett. Hey Mitch, uh, what, tell me what is the reason for the request for the special use permit? You're seeking to reduce the, num the existing number of parking spaces by 10 and it seems that there's a, there may be an issue already in that area with parking and, and as the owner of the business, I'm wondering if you're concerned about having enough parking for your own uh, customers and employees with the reduced number of parking spaces that you're requesting. Right, so I think that that's all accurate. So what happened was through the process, you know, we started at uh, the 35 or 36, whatever that number was, and then based on the city's you know, requirements of where you could park, 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 whatever, it essentially had to get reduced. So we were recommended by staff to go out and get that traffic engineer report, which we did. We actually asked for 23 parking spaces and they came back to like 27. Like that's where you gotta be at. So for me, when I have the traffic engineer's report has done studies of the Just Love Coffees all over the country with drive-throughs and comparable restaurant spaces next to it, if you guys look at the report, it was 27, but that was like <clears throat> one hour of the day was 27. Most of the day you're in single digit uses. So when David and Mr. Sort came out, I was like, well, this could be a problem for me, like if you're already overflowing. So I live right on that street. I go up and down it all the time. So I've been over there. I have a video, I just couldn't upload it because it was too big. Right during their peak times during the week, <clears throat> he's about 40% full. So when I saw that, I'm like, 
Okay, so he's probably talking about the one-off swim meets where it's once a month, once every two months. It's not an actual every day I'm gonna be having issues with an overflow park. So for me, that kind of relieved my concerns. And Mr. Lesores, um, if you guys know that building real well, on the north side of the Evo Swim School, his lot, that whole, that vacant lot there, there's a section right to the north of that that's all graveled off. And it looks like parking for the Evo Swim School. So people will actually park in that when the Evo Swim School's lot is vacant, just because it looks like it's part of their parking. So when he said that, I also went, because I was concerned again for me, like if they're overflowing you, they're for sure gonna overflow to a real lot as opposed to a piece of dirt. And then when I saw what it was, I'm like, well, that's not really just a piece of dirt. That's looks like it's meant so, for that. So it, it, are you saying that people park on that north property when there's actual room at Evo Correct. to park because Correct. it looks like it's parking for Evo? Correct. Okay, just and may be more convenient for yeah, people well, to park on that side. Yeah, you can turn in and out from power onto that little gravel area and then based on where the front door is, like if you get a back spot in the parking lot, it's actually closer on the north side to walk to their front door than in the parking lot to their front door. So I mean, really all he has to do is if he put like a, some sort of roadblock there, there'd be no issue. Okay. And they have plenty of, like I said, my, from what I've seen and gone over there multiple times during what he says is peak hours, there's plenty of parking. And have, have you had any discussions with the owner of Evo about what you might do on those days when there is a swim meet to keep people from filling up your parking lot so they can still access your business? Well, we, we, I mean, we sent him an email essentially just saying like, we have no problem putting signs up in your parking lot saying Evo Swim School only, feel free to tow the cars. You know, on my end of it, I'm looking at like, why would this not be a benefit for you where you have an overflow parking lot? Just come in and buy a cup of coffee and I don't care what you do after that. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in the lot. <laughs> You know, because it's, it's not really, you know, it's not, it's not sit down dining where someone's going to be there for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a lot of in and out, especially with the drive throughs where most of that traffic's going anyway, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have just a clarification with the staff. Um, this site does not have a shared parking, correct? Or was there, what's the parking? That is correct. There is no shared parking agreement on this site. So it's acting independently? Correct. Yeah, Board Member Crockett. If I could just follow up with a question for Josh. He hearing from the applicant now, does the city planning and zoning have any concerns about, about approving this special use permit to reduce the parking? City staff does not have any concerns approving the SUP for the parking reduction. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. I'll actually open up the public hearing. Is there anybody they wanted to speak on this? I did have the one comment I'll read again from David Tate. Um, he is opposed. He says, we support the coffee shop. The proposed chicken restaurant poses a potential parking issue during peak hours. The special use permit is allowing 11 less parking spaces, which is concern. Our parking demands are the greatest from 4 to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then again on Saturday mornings from 8 to 1. Our peak parking will be at the time at the same time as their peak parking. Has a special use permit been approved? If so, we would urge the board to take a closer look at parking demands during four to eight hours, eight p.m. hours on weekdays to avoid this potential issue. Uh, is there any other comments? Can I look at that real quick? Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Are there any other discussion from the board? Madam Chair, that who that comment that you just read is from, from who? Ta uh, David from Evo. Oh, that's David. the Evo David. Swim, David. swim School yeah. facility. Yes. Okay. Is there any board member Peterson? Yeah. So, so on on this again, and and looking at it, and the with the the site where where it's not part of a bigger a, a, a bigger shopping area. There's the the, the buffer for a, additional parking is is severely limited. The the, the the site plan, the, the land use, I don't have any problem with. It's a special use permit to, to reduce the, the parking. I think that's short-sighted. The uh, knowing how these these uh, drive-through coffee businesses are seems like they're always more than expected when they first go in, right? Um, and and end up being things to to uh, work through. And this one doesn't have an adjacent area to buffer into the buffer comes out onto power road and and power road is is uh it's i mean one of the busiest streets in the city and in that area it's only two lanes each direction it's really high traffic it it, it sure seems like um 
like a, a, a risky accident potential area to occur. In, in looking at the, um, so the, the total number of parking spaces provided are 27, and of those, two of them are ADA, and if we look at six to eight, so let's say seven employees for the, the coffee shop, seven employees for the fast casual, we're at 16 of the 27 are ADA and, uh, and employees that only leaves 11 for customers. It, uh, I mean, it, doing the math, it's, it, it, it's hard to see how this is not gonna be a problem and then seeing how the, the adjacent swim use is, ha has an issue already as a, as a side note, that gravel area north of the swim school is actually a, a fire route to get to the charter school um, further to the east from, from the site. And so if people park there, that sounds like a, a, a fire code issue that, that is not a civil issue if they're parking in the fire access zone. It would be a, a, a city fire in, enforcement issue to, to make sure that people aren't parked there. And the, the Saturday mornings are gonna be peak use for they are for the swim school. Saturday mornings for the, the coffee and the, the fast casual seem like peak times. It, it, uh, it, it, it just seems like, to me, like not a, not a responsible thing to be doing. And so for that reason, the, I, I, I won't be supporting the, the special use permit. Are there any board member of the Illinois Way Salcedo? So I don't think this property owner should be held culpable because of overflow from another business. Um, so overflow parking and concerns from Evo, I don't think should apply. He, he shouldn't be held culpable both for um, a business not providing adequate parking for their own clients. In regards to the special use permit, I don't think the high peak hours uh, are gonna be the same for the chicken place versus the coffee place. If it's too busy and uh, you can't get in and out, I'm, a huge coffee drinker, I'll just drive by and go to the next place. So if anything, the property, uh, the business owner is gonna be the one suffering if there's too much. So I have no problem supporting um, the application as is. Any other board members? Board member Crockett? Yeah, I, I, I share some of the same concerns as board member Peterson. I, I understand, I agree completely that the, the applicant is not responsible for the parking at Evo, but just listening to board member Peterson's math it, it, and living by a Dutch bros and seeing the that times pandemonium uh, in terms of parking and drive through there far in excess of what I would have expected. I, it does concern me uh, here that we, you know, we're reducing the parking that's required by, by our code. So I'm not exactly sure yet how I'm going to vote on this, but I do, I do share. Uh, I know we're running out of we're, time, we're too. We're running out. It's coming up. <laughs> uh, but I do share Board Member Peterson's concerns. Okay. Any other board members? Board, you want Board Member Boyle? Well, um, having lived in New York for 10 years, the luxury of, like, one free parking space is just amazing. And I think, like Deanna says, if it's full, you just move on to the to the next one. So I, I, think, um, I think this is adequate. I mean, yes, there's gonna be some times that it fills up, but you know, I lived with it for 10 years and I'm still alive, so. Okay. Um, well, you know, I, I see that there is an issue now, but it's, it's again, it's not on this current applicant. Um, and then basis, if, if, you know, Power Road isn't fully improved, you know, that's gonna help relieve some of that. But be, this being a drive-through facility, I don't, I mean, and it, they have plenty of queuing wrapping around the entire building. So I think that's gonna be more where you're gonna see a lot of the cars rather than in the parking lot. Um, especially if you're coming from Evo, you know, especially that time of night, that's like when all of our sports stuff is going on and I'm, I just wanna get home. So I'm just drive-through, drive-through, drive-through. Um, so I don't have any concerns with it, especially since they said they had um, the previous, they have the, the traffic study, but they also had examples across the country of what their parking calcs look like and how much is being used. Um, that's helpful to know that that's an existing platform and business model that's going through. So, um, so anyways, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Go. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You have a You're good. You're good. No, no, I was going to make a motion, but go ahead, Deanna. <laughs> motion to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. I have the right one. 3B? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry. 
Motion to approve ZON 21-00734, District 6, within the 3700 block of South Power Road East Side, located south of Elliott Road on the east side of Power Road, site plan review and special use permit. This request will allow for a retail building with a drive through Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Motion to approve. Is there a second? I would second that. All right. If everybody please vote. Board Member Allen? Yes. Okay. Uh, passes three, four to two with board member Ayers absent. All right, moving on to the, I believe it's the last item. Item 5E, Sossman 202 Industrial Park within the 7300 to 7600 blocks of East Warner Road alignment and within the 4400 to 4800 blocks of South Sossman Road alignment located west of the Sossman Road alignment and south of the Warner Road alignment preliminary plat. Um, this was actually pulled off um, by, so that we could have somebody uh, public wanted to speak on it and make a comment. So if, if it's every, everybody's okay with it, I'll just skip the staff presentation at this time mm -hmm. and have the applicant come up, or not applicant, but whoever wanted to speak. Good. And if you can state your name and address for the record. So I am uh, Joe Erke with uh, Van Trust Real Estate and uh, 2525 East Camelback Road in Phoenix. And thank you. I'm sorry to be that guy to kind of be the last minute little uh, change here, but hope, hopefully this is quick and just clarification as to what is occurring with this property. Um, little context, our company is under contract to acquire the 80 acres immediately to the east of this subject property. And as you probably know, a lot of things are going on in that area, even another case tonight. Um, Sossman Road, uh, part of a bond approval program. Um, but kind of the long and short of it as it relates to my concern is that our property is reliant upon really both Sossman Road and Warner Road. So we've been monitoring these cases uh, very closely to make sure that those improvements do get put in. And I'll, I'll make reference back to a case that was in uh, on this property that was brought before the Planning Commission in uh, September, and I believe it's 543 uh, case number, where the, uh, the, um, there was a rezone requirement, there was a portion of that property that was ag and a site plan was approved and with conditions, and one of the conditions uh, read all offsite improvements and street frontage landscaping to be installed with the first phase of construction. So that was I do know that the applicant or the, the developer of that parcel is looking at a phase construction schedule and that was really important to us to understand that um, Sossaman and Warner would be going in with the initial phase. So just kind of being diligent and watching things that go on in the area, the, the um, case tonight uh, being the replat of the property, uh, just was digging into it and it, it raised some concerns uh, on twofold. One, initially just on some memo uh, back and forth between the applicant and staff, uh, which your staff was happy to provide to me. Um, but uh, also, more particularly, in the conditions of approval tonight, there's a, a reference to the uh, plat that is part of the submittal being that it's in conform. Or it, actually, I don't have the exact. Let me pull it up here. Compliance with the preliminary plat submitted. And if we look at that, I want to make sure, um, do we have the ability to pull that up at all, the plat that was submitted as part of this? Kind of the long and short of it, there's some references on the uh, plat itself that would suggest that parts of Sossam and, and Warner Road might be proposed or future. And I have no, not an attorney to understand whether that's legally what's happening. I, I just want to make sure that as the first development occurs on that property, it triggers the requirement as was part of the actual zoning case for the property that triggers that requirement to put those improve, put those improvements in. <laughs> um, that's kind of the long and short of it. I just kind of dot and I's and cross and T's here um, to make sure that we're not missing something. With a replat, it really opens the opportunity to maybe sell a portion of the property, and I just want to make sure that the first phase initiates 
full imp off-site improvements on Sossaman and Warner Road. That's all I am working with staff. This all came up in the last, say, 36 hours. I frantically was trying to avoid this tonight and leave it on consent agenda. And really a recommendation came down from economic development. Why don't you just attend the meeting, get it clarified on record, okay. and we're good. Sounds so that's good. why I'm here. Thank you, Mr. Arkey. Mm -hmm. uh, staff, did you want to say anything, clarify? Chair Board members, so the rezoning case, the preliminary plan does not override or eliminate any requirement of conditions of approval that was approved with the rezoning case. And the rezoning case, the condition specifically says that um, all off-site improvement, I think, let me, it specifically says that all off-site improvement and street frontage landscaping to be installed with the first phase of construction. It didn't even say development, it says it said construction. So in a first phase of construction on the property, they will have to install that. So that will be a requirement of the development on the property. This preliminary plan does not override our condition of approval. Gotcha. So, so I think his concern was if it's parceled off, you know, it, that condition for the rezone applies to all the properties. Yeah, that does apply to all of the property. Correct. Okay. okay. So if any of the people who purchase lot two or three or one or whatever, if any of them start construction, all they have to do that. All phase construction, okay. phase mm -hmm. phase of construction. Okay. That, that works? That really is what I'm looking for. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much. Reese, do you have, you're the applicant, do you have any? He needs to get his mic talking. I, I gave him a call 30 <laughs> minutes ago, so he was... His Madam, was Madam Chair, don't let me... I'm, first of all, I apologize for my improper state of dress. <laughs> I wasn't going to come down, and here I am, but I appreciate Joe call. We don't have anything to add. The planning director has adequately described it to you. The conditions are what they are. Nothing on today's agenda changes what was approved in that first one. We know we're going to do all the streets in the first phase, and we're looking forward to it. We're anxious to get going. So I, that's, that's all I have to add. And did I give my address? I may have forgotten. What's your name? Reese Anderson, <laughs> 1744 all South right. Office, number 270. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Are there you. any other board member comments or questions on this one? Did, we, no. did I need to open it and close it and all that good stuff? Just say, yeah, we're closing it. So uh, is there a motion? Board? Motion to approve item 5E, Sussman 202 Industrial Park District 6, within the 7300 to 7600 blocks of the East Warner Road alignment south side, and within the 4400 to 4800 blocks of the South Sussman Road alignment west side, located west of the Sussman Road alignment and south of the Warner Road alignment preliminary plat. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. I second. Oh, all right, uh, there's a motion and a second. Can all the board members please vote? Board member Allen? Yes. All right, motion passes unanimously with board member Ayers absent. Um, I don't see anything else on the agenda, so I have a motion to adjourn. I'll move we adjourn. Second. <laughs> Really? No second, second to adjourn? Second. <laughs> all right. Second. All in favor? Or, yeah. We're adjourned. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you.